Out of the village, out of the thatched and clutching shires, out of the grave and furrow, furrow and grave, where a sword first tried the last cruel dances of childhood and awoke to the shires, forever retreating his greatness on marsh fire. The banged flight of the kingfisher always above him. Now Uma walked upon roses in the level light of the rose. And troubled by dragons, he turned to the end of the land. To fringe of all sense and senses. To wilderness where Paladine bade him to return. And there in the loud tunnel of night, he grew in unblemished violence in yearning, stunned into himself by a deafening gauntlet of voices. It was there and then that the white stag found him at the end of a journey planned from the shores of creation. And all the time staggered at the forest edge, where Huma haunted and starry drew his bow, thanking the gods for their bounty and keeping. Then he saw in the ranged wood, in the first silence, the dazed heart symbol, the rack of antlers resplendent. He lowered the bow, and the world resumed. Then Huma followed the stag. Its tangle of endless receding, as a memory of a young light, as the talons of birds ascending. The mountains crouched before them, nothing would change now. The three moons stopped in the sky, and a long night tumbled into shadows. In the morning when they reached the grove, the lap of the mountain where the stag departed, nor did whom a fall, knowing the end of this journey was nothing but green and the promise of green that endured in the eyes of the woman before him. And holy the days he drew near her, holy the air that carried his words of endearment, his forgotten songs. And the rapt moon's knell of the great mountain, still she looted him, bright and retreating as marsh fire, nameless and lovely, more lovely because she was nameless. As they learned at the world, the dazzling shelves of the air, the wilderness itself, were plain and diminished things to the heart's thicket. At the end of the day, she told him her secret. For she was not of woman, nor was she mortal, but the daughter and heiress from a line of dragons, for whom are the sky turned indifferent, cluttered by the moons. The brief life of grass mocked him and mocked his fathers, and the thorn light bristled on the gliding mountain, but the nameless she tendered a hope not in her keeping. The paladine only might answer that through his enduring wisdom she might step from forever and there in her silver arms. The promise of the grove might arise and flourish, for that was the moon of prayed and the stag returned. And east through the desolate fields, through ash, through cinders and blood, the harvest of dragons traveled whom are cradled by dreams of the silver dragon. The stag perpetual was no before him. At last the eventual horror, a temple so far to the east that it lay where the east was ending. There Paladine appeared in a pool of stars and glory, announcing that of all choices, 
One most terrible had fallen to whom a poor paladine knew that the heart is a nest of yearnings that can travel forever toward light becoming what we can never be. For the bride of whom I could step into the devouring sun, together they will return to the Thatchshires. And leave behind the secret of the lands, the world unpeopled in darkness, wed to the dragons, or whom I could take on the dragon lands, cleansing all of Crin, of death and invasion of the green paths of his love. The hardest of choices in whom I remembered How the wilderness cloistered and baptized his first thoughts Beneath the sheltering sun and now has the black moon wheeled and pivoted Drawing the air and the substance from Crin From the things of Crin From the grove, from the mountain, from the abandoned shires he would sleep, he would send it all away. For the choosing was all of the pain, and the choices were he'd on the hand when the arm had been severed. But she came to him weeping and luminous in the landscape of dreams where he saw the world collapse and renew on the glint of the lens. In her farewell may collapse and renew Through his doomed veins the rise and burst He took upon the dragon lands He took up the story The pale heat rushed through his rising arm And the sun and the three moons waiting for wonders Hung in the sky together to the west whom rode to the high clearest tower on the back of the silver dragon and the path of the flight crossed over a desolate country where the dead walked only mouthing the names of dragons and the men in the tower surrounded and riddled by dragons by the cries of the dying the roar in the ravenous air Awaited the unspeakable silence Awaited for worse in the fear that the crash of the senses Would end in a moment of nothing Where the mind lies down with its losses and darkness But the winding of whom was horn in the distance Danced on the battlements all of Sonia lifted its face to the eastern sky and the dragons wheeled to the highest air believing some terrible change had come from out of their tumult wings out of the chaos of dragons out of the heart of nothing the mother of night a swirl and a blankness of colors swooped to the east into the snare of the sun and the sky collapsed into silver and blankness on the ground whom I laid at his side a woman her silver skin broken the promise of green released from the gifts of her eyes she whispered her name as the queen of darkness banked in the sky above whom she descended the mother of night and from the loft of her battlements men saw shadows boil on the colorless dive of her wings a hovel of thatch and rushes the heart of a wilderness a lost silver light spattered in terrible crimson and then from the center of shadows came a depth in which darkness itself was a glimmer denying all hair all light all shadows and thrusting his lance into emptiness whom I fell to the sweetness of death into abiding sunlight through the lands, through the dear might and brotherhood of those who must walk to the end of the breath and the senses. 
He banished the dragons back to the core of nothing, and long lands blossomed in balance and music. Stunned in the new freedom, stunned by the brightness and colors, by the heart blessing of the holy winds. The knights carried Uma, they carried the dragon lands to the grove in the lap of the mountain. When they returned to the grove in pilgrimage in homage, the lance, the armor, the dragon bane himself had vanished to the day's eye. By the night of the full moon's red and silver shines down on the hills on the forms of a man and a woman, shimmering steel and silver, silver and steel above the village over the thatched and nurturing shires. <laughs>